Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm the Obsessive Bookseller and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about top authors that I feel don't get enough attention. Now, I know I'm not the only one reading these authors, but I feel like I'm one of the few talking about them and the reason they're on this list is because I feel like there's no difference between the quality of their writing and stories to other books on the market that people read and talk about a lot. Hoping to get the ball rolling for a few of them here. The first author on my list is Rachel Aaron, also known as Rachel Bach. She's a mix of trad and self-published, and her first series that I read was the Eli Mon Press, and it was a ton of fun. Really cool world building. The characters were a hoot. Um, a couple of the most memorable characters I've ever read have come from her works. The framework for this one's really fun. He's a thief and he has a huge bounty on his head. He wants to achieve the ultimate heist by stealing the king. And another one of her works that I'm a huge fan of is the Heart Strikers series. The first one's Nice Dragons Finish Last. And I love this series. It's a hodgepodge of genres. It has a lot of high fantasy elements, but it's set in an urban setting. It reads like an urban fantasy. And the fun factor is very YA, but it's done in a much more mature manner. Now, this author also has a nonfiction writing book on how to write 10,000 words a day. And I've read it, and she's got a lot of really good advice on how to increase your writing pace. And I think her method is one of the reasons why her writing is so easy flowing and fun. The only caveat is 10,000 words a day is sometimes not a good thing when it extends your scenes a little bit longer than they should be. Um, one of the books in the Eli Mon Press I thought was dragged out just a little too long, and I think the last two books in the Heart Strikers could have easily been combined into one book. So take it or leave it. But yeah, for overall quality, I really love this author. I can't wait to see what she's going to write next. Next on my list, who I think I've mentioned a lot, is Julie Ternita, and I have read everything this author has published so far, I think. She has fun story ideas, loads of adventure and exploration, amazing characters, and a lot of dry humor, which y'all know is my favorite. She has all the elements that I love in other science fiction novels, but then on top of that is responsible for the single best character creations I've ever read. She was a biologist by profession before she became a writer and that deep knowledge of how things work in the natural world really comes through and she was able to be really creative but really accurate as well with what kinds of environments and requirements these alien species would need. So many different cool aliens. And I like all of her works, but I very much prefer her Species Imperative and her Essen novels. Next on my list is T.A. Pratt, also known as Tim Pratt. This is the first book in the Marla Mason series. It's called Blood Engines. It's an urban fantasy, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody else mention it other than one friend on my Goodreads group who has read the series and, and did a few buddy reads with me of the later novels. The Serpent Fantasy is slightly weirder, slightly grosser than your average one, but it has great writing and the magic in it is so much more vibrant and the situations they find themselves in so much more interesting. It makes some of my other urban fantasy series pale in comparison in some ways, but it is a little less accessible because it does get a little more out there. And with this series in particular, I lost steam about the point where he went self-published and lost that editor's eye to kind of rein the wildness in a little bit. It got a little too weird and a little too self-indulgent around book eight or nine, but books one through seven, pure gold. Possibly my favorite author on the list is Glenda Lark. She's quite prolific. She's got like four different series and I think she's working on a new one. I love this author. My favorite thing about her is her world building. She always has these exotic locations 
and the world itself almost always plays a part in the story. I'm always interested in her magic systems. Um, her characters are very relaxed, very easy to get behind. And I find her stories completely immersive. These are the ultimate comfort reads for me. Um, my favorite is actually the Aware. It's the Isles of Glory series, but it's the least recommendable because it has a few things that make readers go, that was an interesting choice, but it didn't bother me. But it's hard to recommend because of that. This one's probably the most recommendable, but it's probably my least favorite that I've read from her, but even that, it's still a four stars. This one is heavily character driven, reminding me a little bit of the style of Joe Abercrombie, but without the grim dark aspect. So in some ways a little vanilla, but you know, comfort read. And then the Stormlord series is probably the one I've recommended the most often. I think the magic system is really cool. I thought the characters were really engaging. The setting is really immersive. It's the second series she has set in a desert setting. Her Heart of the Mirage is the other one. And yeah, love Glenda Lark, and I'm surprised that I don't see more people reading her, let alone talking about her. Next on my list is Elizabeth Hayden. Now, I know why this one doesn't make its way onto a lot of people's lists. The first hundred pages of the very first book read quite different from most fantasy novels and it's a little out there. It reads more like a prequel where there's a setup for what's going to happen for the entire series. And it's really confusing, but I have to say, once you make it through those first hundred pages, that's when the magic starts happening. One of my favorite things about this series is the inclusion of several non-human, humanoid races as main characters and their behavior and mannerisms are superb. I really loved getting into their societies a little more. This is a surprisingly dragon-rich series, which I also obviously loved. I thought the writing was beautiful. I thought the stories were interesting. Everything was so immersive. This is one of those worlds that I can still remember vividly and one of those stories that stick with me long after I finish them. The other thing that makes it a little harder to recommend is there's a stronger love story in this one than most, but a lot of people like that, and I didn't think it was overbearing at all, and in fact kind of added more depth because it gave the characters more to fight for and more to lose. And she also has a middle grade series set in the same world, and for the fun factor, this is one of the best middle grade books I've ever read, even as an adult. I've just finished the first one and I'm so excited to talk more about it going forward. Next is an author I feel like I haven't explored thoroughly. Juliet McKenna, specifically for her Inarian series. Disclaimer, it has been a long time since I read this one, but I remember it being as good, if not better, than a lot of the comparable fantasy I was reading at the time. It has great characters, an interesting plot, lots of adventure and excitement, great writing style, really decent world building, and I am not sure why I haven't read more from this author, considering how much I loved her and how many other books she has on the market. Maybe I'll make that a project going forward, and then let you know if she holds up to the test of time, because with her I'm actually not quite sure because it's been so long. Next on the list is Jennifer Fallon, and I am currently reading her Lion of Senate series, but I remember absolutely loving this one when I read it. I'm showing this one because my Lion of Senate copy is trashed. Things happen. But as I was reading her, I was also reading Abercrombie's The Blade itself, and it struck me at the similarities of the plot structure, the very slow pacing, the heavily character-driven and political novels but without the grim dark factor. So if you like Abercrombie, but you want something a little more lighthearted, this one, or especially The Lion of Senate, would be a good pick. I am really getting along with her writing style. She has jumped to easily one of my top priorities to explore more from, and I think that will include a reread of this series to, again, see if it stands the test of time and to finish out the Second Sons trilogy. And then to read the many books that I've been collecting from her since. 
definitely an undermentioned author based on how good she is. This next one I almost didn't include on the list, but I have been loving this author for so many years and he is finally starting to gain traction. So he's no longer quite as unappreciated as he could be, but he's one of my very first unappreciated authors and that is Daniel Abraham. A lot of people are getting on board with him now, especially with the wild success of the Expanse series, which if you didn't know, he co-wrote as James S.A. Corey. And I've mentioned this in my top fantasy video, but this author's world building is breathtaking. His writing style is so beautiful and flowing and his fantasies are so unconventional. It's not like the same crap we've always been reading. It's got some new ideas in it, a new way of presenting everything. And I think he is absolutely superb and I am thrilled that he is getting more attention. I couldn't for my own sake make a video about underappreciated authors without including him, even though I think he's quickly growing in popularity. So good on you, Daniel Abraham. The final author on my list, I have not heard mention anywhere, and that is Lawrence Watt Evans. I think this author is incredibly creative. Um, he has a whole Legend of Ethstar series. Sounds like I'm lisping. Ethel Thayer. One of the most fun I've read is Ethanolin's Restoration, where magic goes awry and inanimate objects come alive and the apprentice is supposed to round them all up and fix the problem. It's really fun. And he's got several standalone novels in that world. So really creative, a lot of fun. My favorite thing about him is his incredibly easygoing writing style. Just beautifully flowing off the pages. And it gives you a tangible fantasy story to stick your teeth into. The Misenchanted Sword is another one I've tried. I need to reread this one to continue the series. Uh, the only off-putting thing is that it's self-published, but you know if I'm buying a self-published novel, it's because I really enjoyed the author's works. Because I hate the way they look. This one is ugly as sin. And then finally, included in my very rough, very early video on favorite dragon books is Dragon Weather. This is another one of those authors that I'd like to make a high priority because of how much I've enjoyed his works in the past. And I think between the great writing style, the awesome variety of stories that he tells and just how prolific he is and how creative, I am really surprised that he hasn't gained more traction but he really works for me. And those are my picks. I would love to know which books on my list you've read because I know, I know some of you have read these. Am I out on an island loving them all by myself? I also want to know if there are any other series or authors that we don't hear about very often that you really loved. Because if it's a random little spoken about fantasy, I probably have it in my collection waiting to be read. So help me bump it up my TBR please. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate all of your comments and likes and support of my channel. It makes this so much more fun to do and it motivates me to keep going. Thank you and I hope to catch you next time.